Having spent several years as the technical leader responsible for Cisco IOS, the software that runs 70-80% of the world's internet networks, I left in 2005 to go create Multivin to set the internet free from the grips of manufacturers, of networking equipment. Before Multivin came into the picture, if you owned a Cisco software, an HP software, a Juniper software, you had to go to Cisco, HP and Juniper to buy their service contracts in order for you to get software updates. That is illegal and anti-competitive because they use their dominant powers to foreclose you know, the market and prevent competitors like Multivin coming into the picture. In 2008, Multivin filed a federal antitrust lawsuit against Cisco to put an end to Cisco's malpractice of forcing customers to buy its service contract in order to get software updates to correct the defects that Cisco put in the software in the first place. As we all know, uncorrected software defects can be exploited for cyber attack purposes. In April 2009, Cisco came back and offered a settlement and said, Multivan, here's a few million dollars. We'll give your customers some bug fixes, not all bug fixes, but you can't advertise the fact that you have access to bug fixes. And we said to them, if we can't advertise the fact that we have bug fixes for our customers, we're not truly competing with you. And essentially they said, if you don't take it, we'll come after you. And we said, okay, we'll see you guys in court. And lo and behold, a month later, they came up with these false charges that they fabricated and filed it as counterclaims, saying me or someone under my control at Multivin viewed Cisco's website 99 times and five of those times downloaded Cisco software in 2006 using a Cisco employee username and password. That is absolutely preposterous. Anyhow, they pursued this argument. Unbeknownst to us, they were also channeling this through their local prosecutor in San Jose to essentially try and criminalize competition. As if by magic, my US visa was canceled. Because my visa was canceled in the US, I couldn't attend the court proceedings in California. We now had to schedule the deposition in Vancouver. So we all went to flew to Vancouver. I flew there for four days and you know we had 12 hour depositions per day. On the third day, I was arrested in the hotel room where the deposition was taking place on camera and apparently the arrest was from the US government asking that I be extradited to the US because of a complaint that Cisco had filed to the US government. So essentially Cisco attempted to use the US government to criminalize competition and undermine our federal antitrust lawsuit. No. I'm sorry, I'm a special master appointed by okay. the court. We're conducting a deposition in a legal proceeding. By the federal judge. Okay. After his arrest, uh, he was in jail and had to try to get out on bail in here in Vancouver. The uh, prosecutor wrote a letter for the bail hearing um, urging that he be kept in custody and not released. That letter, it, it ultimately transpired, was filled again with things that were simply not true and assertions that he was a flight risk, that he had history of fleeing, etc. Allegations about him that were not true so as to make him look like a shifty character who for some unknown reason was briefly going to be in Vancouver and needed to be arrested. They did not explain that he was being questioned under oath in front of American officials because a special master had been brought up to preside over the deposition in Vancouver. But the court here ultimately did release him after 28 days, I believe, uh, on bail. And then he faced approximately another 10 months or a year here in Vancouver waiting for the extradition hearing. So he had a difficult situation to face here because his family were back in Europe. Um, so it was posed great, and young children. Um, so it was very difficult for him. If we're going to have a proper fair democracy and a proper court system, where lawyers are officers of the court, and when they speak to a court or they file something with the court, they do their utmost to ensure that it's true. They don't put contents in there that are simply untrue with a view to having someone's liberty interests compromised by having them rot in jail for a year because Cisco would like to have that happen because Cisco doesn't want anyone suing them. I mean, that's what happened here, and it, it really exposes the naked... Um, power of multinational corporations who behave in a manner, as the judge here described it, where they're manifesting duplicity.
Judge Justice McKinnon said, we have a man with no criminal record who's made every possible effort to comply with U.S. immigration laws and procedures, but who dared to take on a multinational giant. On July 19, 2010, Cisco settled Multiman's federal antitrust lawsuit by making software bug fixes, security updates, and patches available to our customers. This unprecedented move made Multiman the first, until today, the only company on earth that's able to independently and objectively maintain Cisco and all other networking equipment around the world.